What's up airplane collectors, welcome to a model fighter jet review, it's your host Ray. In today's video, I'll be reviewing the Gemini Aces 1-72nd to scale FA-18F Super Hornet for VX-9. This aircraft in particular is also nicknamed Vandy-1. In this video, I'll talk about the box, then the model itself, as well as its various accessories, and at the end of the video I'll give my personal opinion about what I think of the model and whether or not I recommend it to other collectors. There is a high number of accessories with this model, and a lot of things to talk about. That being said, this is going to be a pretty long review, so sit back, relax, let's turn and burn. Alright, so starting off the box. The box is pretty big at 28 centimeters lengthwise and heightwise, and 11 centimeters wide. I'll show you around the box now, so here's the front, bottom, right side, top, left side, and here is the back side. This box features a flap that allows for the model to be seen in the box. As you can see, I removed all of the protective packaging as well as the model itself because there's really not that much to see in there. Now, on the underside of the flap, we have some information regarding this aircraft as well as the F-18 Super Hornet. So take a moment to read this if you'd like to. Included in the box is the model almost fully assembled, fully painted, and almost ready to go. A wide array of accessories for both ordnance and landing gear configurations, a metal and plastic display stand, an authenticity card which displays the model's serial number. In this case, I have serial number 148 out of 504, and there's also some specifications about the F-18 Super Hornet back here. And lastly, there is an instruction set on how to assemble the model. It's decent. It gets the job almost done, but it does require the modeler to know a bit of the anatomy of the F-18 in order to assemble everything properly, as well as a bit of patience because the fit on some of these parts is not exactly perfect. I'll go over specifics later. And here's the model itself. This is the simplest I can get the model to be without it being too much of a hassle. So for the majority of the time in this review, I will have the model in the no ordnance geared down configuration with the pilot figures in the canopy. The reason I have pilot figures in there is because they're just extremely hard to position and insert into the canopy and I can imagine it's a nightmare to remove them so I don't want to risk breaking anything, but that's how things are going to be. I will demonstrate specifically what the different attachments and configura configurations look like later. Now, I'm going to give you a quick 360 of the model. So for the fuselage length, it's 26 centimeters, wingspan is 20 centimeters, and it's 8 centimeters tall. Pretty darn big and accurate to 1 to 72nd scale, and this model is made primarily out of die-cast metal, and as a result, it's pretty heavy for its size. So I'll start off my review at the front of the aircraft, and we'll move from the top of the aircraft to the wings to the bottom of the aircraft, and that's how I will review the aircraft. So, up at the nose here, overall everything looks pretty good, printed detail is very nice. The only complaints I have are just with the small details with whatever this thing is, as well as the gun. So, this here is an exit hole for the bullets to leave when the aircraft when the gun is fired, and these little indentations here are exhaust ports for the muzzle flash, if that makes sense. Now, the reason I have an issue with this is because this is positioned too far back. The printing here is supposed to be a metal, I believe a thermal plate to resist against the heat from the gun being fired. Now, the gun barrel should be in the center of this thermal plate here, as well as the uh, the exhaust ports here. However, you, you can see they're not exactly aligned. Uh, it's more further back. Now, I'm not sure if this is a mold issue or if this is a printing issue. I do believe it's a combination of both. But yeah, this thermal pad here should be in the center of, or rather the gun exit hole here should be in the center of this thermal pad. So that's one little issue I have. Another one is this here, it's a plastic part, and you can tell that the attachment is not exactly the best. There's a pretty big gap there. I'm not sure what it looks like on the other side. Okay, the other side, it seems to be flush with the fuselage, but or in this case, the nose. But yeah, there is a decent gap there. Aside from that, no complaints up here. Like I said, printed detail is quite extensive. Molded detail is also pretty darn impressive. You can see a lot of small things in the mold there. The black paint job doesn't help in seeing some of these details, but when you see the aircraft up close, you can really appreciate some of these. Now, moving to the canopy here. 
The canopy can be opened and closed like this. And you can see it's got a nice little mechanism back there akin to the actual F-18, which I find really cool. However, it is rather hard to get it to stay upwards, so you might want to have some sort of support up there if you do want to open this. And I can imagine it's very easy to break, so take extra care when handling your model. Oh, look, it stays up like that. It doesn't stay up all the way, but yeah, take extra care when handling this model. Now, in terms of cockpit details, this model is pretty nicely detailed with the cockpits and the interiors and all that stuff. I can't move the figures, like I said. And while we're talking about the figures, here's what they look like. They're made out of a soft, flexible material, so you can push them around and bend them as you need to when you're fitting them in the aircraft. Regardless, though, it's still inherently difficult to put them in there, so uh, do what you wish with that. Now, before I keep moving on, I forgot to point out the antennas here. So there are a few antennas here on the side of the aircraft. I'm not sure if that small one there is supposed to be bent like that, because on the other side it's straightened. I imagine it's not, but if it is then that's accurate. If it's not, well, shoot, I might have messed up the model. So, yeah, but the antennas look pretty good there. I'll go over the ones on the bottom in more detail later. Now, another issue that I have is, again, with printing stuff. Printing is where this model appears to suffer the most. In the form of these warning placards that are painted red, these are supposed to be clearly defined bright red. However, it appears as though the paint was not applied sufficiently, and it ended up blending with the black paint underneath. And painting lighter colors over black is pretty difficult. I know that as a scale modeler myself, but they could have done a bit of a better job in that, in my opinion. But aside from that, there's really no issues. So I'll move down the rest of the fuselage. While I'm moving down, take note of the rivet details on the mold. That's something that this aircraft has that I'm very impressed with that other aircraft don't have. Uh, very nicely detailed in terms of mold detail. Now. Here is the vertical stabilizers. These are pretty good as well. I don't have anything to complain about. Here's the one on the left side. And one thing that's a little bit interesting about these is that the rudders, they do move. You can move them rather easily, at least on my model here. So that is very interesting. So if you want to position this as if it's launching from an aircraft carrier, you can position them both to face inwards like that. And it looks pretty cool. Now in terms of overall detail, the Vertical stabilizers are pretty good. I don't have anything to complain about. Uh, no issues really, so I won't talk about them too much. And now that we're back at the top of the fuselage here, we can appreciate more of the mold details. Very impressive overall with all of the details. That's there. You can see another warning placard right there. It's also a little bit dark, but it's not as dark as the ejection ones that I showed you guys earlier. So yeah, overall pretty impressive. Here's the exhaust as well. These are painted in nice metallic silver. Uh, no complaints really on the inside they do have some uh, engine detail in there if my camera would focus that would be just fine with me there we go so yeah the engines are the exhausts are very nicely detailed as well so overall very solid detail now you may have seen this earlier but the horizontal stabilizers here they're not well one they're not as detailed as the fuselage not that they're supposed to be either but it's just something to notice but they do move as well you can move them and they do scratch up against the fuselage a little bit, but it's not enough to damage any of the details on there. And you can see actually that the horizontal stabilizers can be used to disguise a mold seam there, which even then it's not as noticeable. So overall, pretty impressive job in terms of the engineering of the mold. And here you can see the serial number and the aircraft type F18F16673. And it's the same story on the other side. I'll just show that to you really quick here. This one moves as well. This one doesn't hit the fuselage, it's just the left one, so yeah, that's overall very good so far. Moving on to the wings. The wings don't have as much printed detail as the fuselage and all that fun stuff, but you can see the molded detail on the wings is seriously something impressive. I, I'm very impressed with the molded detail on this model overall. So everything up here looks pretty good. This is the right wing as you can see, and the left wing, I can also say the same, it looks good as well. The only difference is that on the left wing is that it has that uh, U.S. Air Force and U.S. Navy roundel on there. Looks pretty good. Now on the tips of the wings, on the hard points, you can see that there are weapons. And on the right wing, it's an M9 Sidewinder. And this is one of the training versions. All of the weapons on this model are training versions because of the blue bands that they have around them. And this looks incredibly detailed and very nicely shaped. However, it can't be removed from the model, so that's one thing that you can't... Well, that's one of the weapons you can't remove with, from the model. On the other side, we have this thing. 
I'm not sure what this is. If any of you do know what this is, please let me know. I've been trying to find out for a while, but I've also I've also seen this on a lot of training and adversary aircraft, so I presume it's something that's used in training to monitor like flight conditions or uh, target things. I don't know, but that's also on there as well. It looks pretty nicely detailed too. So here is the bottom of the aircraft. Now here's some of the antennas up here as promised. All of these are accurate. And these in particular are pretty sharp, and I guarantee they're pretty fragile, so be careful when handling the model. Now, move, move down to the landing gear here. This is what the nose gear looks like in the extended position. The wheel does roll, and the wheels themselves are made out of rubber, which is nice. I'll go over these in a bit more detail later. Now, here's our giant engine intakes. Unfortunately, if you do look inside of them, the insides aren't painted white like on the real thing. And there is no fan blade detail back there or anything, but it would be inherently hard to see anyway, so that's not exactly a big issue. But yeah, you can see the intake warning there. Here is one of the hard points there. We got a M120 AMRAM, and you can tell it's also one of the training ones, like I said earlier, because it's got the blue bands around it. And under the, under the wing, you can see the th three hard points here. Uh, very nicely detailed down here as well, no complaints. On the rear section of the aircraft here, we can see the Gemini Aces logo. It's small, it's nothing too crazy. And here we have the tail hook. This does not move, but it is made out of a soft material, so at least if you poke it by accident, it won't break, or it's not as easy to break. And on the left side, we have this targeting laser right here. This cannot be removed, but it's there. All right, so here's what the landing gear bays look like without anything in them. They're pretty nicely detailed, and the colors seem to be painted pretty accurately as well. No complaints there, but here's what it looks like just without anything in there. Now, here are all the pieces for the extended landing gear configuration. For the sake of saving time, as well as preserving your brain cells, I'm not going to go all over all of these in detail because there is way too many pieces. And that's also one of the main drawbacks of this model. All of these are pretty hard to assemble, and you'll definitely need tools to do this. Now, to make matters even worse, these are all friction-based attachments. As you can see, the attachment points, they all rely on friction to stay in place. The problem with this is that some of these parts are loose, and you have to come up with solutions to try and get them to fit correctly. I remember having particular trouble with the ones on the nose, and the way that I fix them is by putting some super glue on the tip here and then letting it dry in order to form a thicker surface here. That worked for me. If you have another strategy that doesn't involve super glue, probably that was probably a bit more reliable than mine, but do whatever floats your boat, or in this case, keeps the pieces in place. Yeah, it's, it's quite crazy. In terms of the main gear themselves, the wheels do not roll, but they are made out of rubber. Oh, shoot. Yeah, no, they don't roll, but it's, it's kind of funny how the nose wheel rolls, but the main gears don't. Now, for the retracted landing gear configuration, there is a set of covers that are included. Now, I'm going to try my best to figure out how these go in there. So, you just got to put one in there like that. Now, I say take a very serious consideration when putting these in, because once you put them in, you cannot get them out. I will say that because there's no holes or anything to insert a tool to remove them. And that's a major issue because if you want to swap out the configuration, you kind of need to do that. So that's why I don't have them fit in all the way. It does take a bit of pressure to get them in there, but here's what the retracted covers look like. And here's the one for the nose. It looks pretty good as well. They all fit pretty snugly with the aircraft. Some of them might need a little bit of sanding, but just take extra caution. Really consider if you want to put this thing in the retracted configuration because once you do it, it would be pretty hard, if not impossible, to undo it without damaging the model. Now let's talk about ordnance options. So with this aircraft, you get a pretty limited selection of ordnance compared to other manufacturers, such as Hobbymaster. Still, though, you do get a decent set of weaponry and fuel tanks. So the first one I'd like to talk about is this fuel tank here that goes under the wing. This goes on the innermost hard point and it cannot fit on the, any of the other hard points. Now you can see that this is a friction based attachment and over time these weather, or not weather, but these tend to get very loose very easily and I use my glue trick like I did with the landing gear in order to kind of get them to stay. But yeah, you can see it fits there. This one fits pretty well, so I won't complain. And the one on the right wing is, oh wait, this is the underside of the right wing, but the one on the other wing also fits pretty well. And these fuel tanks are molded pretty nicely. You can see the details on the holder as, or the pylon or hard point, whatever you want to call it. 
it's made very well, so I won't complain too much about it. But the only issue I have is actually with all of the underwing attachments is that, yeah, they do fit very loose. Next up, we have an air-to-ground missile. This is the AGM-88 Harm. And at, once again, you can see the blue band on it, denoting that this one is a training one. This one can only fit on the middle hard point here, and it can also fit here, but why would you do that? Uh, that's where the fuel tank goes. So yeah, it fits in there. These fit also very loosely, and like I said, the attachment point gets damaged pretty easily. Now, something I noticed is that the fins are kind of twisted, and that's not supposed to be like that. They're supposed to be straightened, and you can straighten them, but it's a little bit harder to do since it is made out of plastic instead of metal because the plastic will bend back to its original shape. So yeah, that's something to consider. Nonetheless though, this is also pretty nicely detailed with even some placards on the missile as well. Last but not least, we have our iconic firework here, the AIM-120 AMRAM. Again, it's it matches the one here on the fuselage and it also has some warning placards on it on the front of the missile and the body there. Very nicely done. And these fit the loosest out of all of them. They go all the way on the outside here. And I've already had to kind of, you can, yeah, you can see this one is, oh shoot, you can see this one is very loose. So I'll have to fit this one on the other wing. Let me uh, test this one. And I'll also have to uh, redo the attachment there. Yeah, if I tilt this, yeah, you can see it falls right out. The last ordnance option here is this centerline fuel tank that goes on the fuselage. You have no way of telling which way is forward and which way is not, but the pointer end does go forward. I'll fit that on there like this. This one fits very tightly and it fits very nicely on the aircraft. All right, so here's what the model looks like on the included display stand. As you can see, I've also reattached the extended landing gear and I messed up the nose one, I think. All right, who cares? I'll fix that later. But here's what the included display stand looks like when it's attached to the model. It's pretty nice. You can also tilt it from side to side and turn it. It is, a, it is definitely awkward and hard to assemble and the pieces don't fit together all that well. But in the end, it does hold up the model pretty well. If I, if I shake it a little bit, it won't fall. Of course, I'm holding it here in case it does. It won't fall. And the way that it sits is that it has a plastic part back here that fits inside of the exhaust nozzles. And that's how it holds the model in place. So it is definitely unconventional, but it works. That's what matters. Your model won't fall over. It shouldn't fall over, at least. I'm not very experienced with these stands either, but I trust this one. So, yeah, it's pretty good, and I do like the fact that you can position it, even though it looks a little bit weird as a result of that. And lastly, here is a steering contest I'd forfeit any day of the week. Here we can see gear balance, weapon alignment, all that fun stuff. So, wing flex looks good. Vertical stabilizers look good. Gear balance looks pretty symmetrical, even though that they're assembled and everything... It is rather awkward to assemble the landing gear, but it does look pretty good. You can also see that the weapon hard points are canted outwards. Now, my guess in my previous video when I was reviewing a different F-18, when I noticed this, I guess that this outward cant was due to uh, preventing ordnance from contacting the aircraft once it was released, and that ended up being correct, so that weapon cant is accurate. Now, you can see here, something I want to show you guys is sometimes the canopy gets kind of misaligned and all that fun stuff. All you got to do is just position it back into place. And yeah, overall, pretty solid up here and very scary. I better stop before I start getting a panic attack. All right, and that is the end of my review. And holy cow, this, this video went out to be pretty long. All right, so I won't waste any of your time. It's time for my personal opinion and recommendation. So overall, this thing is pretty damn beautiful. Please excuse my language, but it is. It's a very nice plane. The mold detail is very impressive. And especially coming from Gemini, this is something. Even though it's a Witty Wings mold, still, it's a very nice model. The only real issues that I have with it, personally, are the printed details not being the correct color, as I explained earlier. And aside from that, it's a great model, and it's very nicely detailed. Now, time for my recommendation. I'm going to word this very carefully. I recommend this model to modelers who are experienced and comfortable with handling very small parts and making small modifications to models. This is not for any ordinary model collector. This is for people who have experience with precision scale modeling. The reason I say that is because those landing gear pieces, like I showed you earlier, plenty of small parts that you can easily lose, break if you mishandle them. So this is something for someone experienced. 
If you're looking for something a little bit easier, I recommend buying the Hobby, the Hobby Master version, which will be released shortly. But yeah, this is definitely a model for someone who is experienced with handling uh, small parts and precision pieces. Well, that's all I've got for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and stay until the end. I won't waste any more time, so thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more model airplane content. Like, comment, and subscribe. Take care of yourselves. Happy building. Happy collecting. See you next time.